pimps, power, and pretty ladies. This is Blacks History Month, a 28-day celebration of black exploitation films. If you're like me and didn't really care for Black Caesar, then boy does director Larry Cohen have something for you. Released in the same exact year, Hell Up in Harlem is the sequel to Black Caesar, but it almost completely reinvents everything about Black Caesar. Yeah, it has some of the same characters, but that's about where the similarities end. Gone is the slow mafia style melodrama of Black Caesar. In its place, we get a much more fast paced and straightforward revenge tale that tells a more compelling story and even does a better job of making Tommy Gibbs a more likable person. All that does is beg the question, why didn't they just make this movie in the first place? Well, I don't know the answer to that, so I'll just assume that Black Caesar was the movie that Larry Cohen always wanted to make, but when it was released, people were like, what the hell is this? So he made hell up in Harlem to correct that mistake. This of course is all speculation by me, I don't know, I wasn't alive during that time. Hell up in Harlem picks up right after Tommy Gibbs is shot in the street in Black Caesar, but it retcons the ending. In Black Caesar, it's highly suggested that Tommy Gibbs dies in the end at the hands of some street children. They probably realized that's a silly as hell way to go for a big time crime boss, so it was rewritten to show that Tommy called his estranged father to come and save him before that even happens. He gets patched up in the hospital and goes right back to doing what he was always doing. Just bigger. He puts his father in charge of half the company and begins to take over Harlem again. This gets the attention of a district attorney named D'Angelo, who's of course crooked. Because what government or law enforcement person isn't in these movies? And it becomes a cat and mouse game of who can one up who. Not all of the sins of Black Caesar are erased. Tommy's wife Helen, played by Gloria Hendry, you know, the one he raped in the first movie? She returns in this movie, and I guess they felt like they didn't treat her bad enough in the first movie. I got something planned for Helen. She was working with those pigs like D'Angelo to steal the ledgers. So she's gotta pay for that, Paul, you understand? Yeah, but dog, that was after you raped her though. What was she supposed to do? They take her kids from her and all types of other stuff for no reason. But then partway through the movie, Tommy grows a conscience and starts to feel bad about how she's being treated. Man, make up your damn mind. Do you hate her or not? In this movie, they try to redeem him by having him marry an over-the-top religious girl named Jennifer, who's played by Margaret Avery, who would go on to play Suge Avery in the movie The Color Purple. He treats her far better, so this movie tries to make it some kind of redemption story. Tommy's father, who I didn't mention much in Black Caesar, has a much bigger role, and he even gets his own theme song. played over the top by Julius Harris, and normally I would say that's a bad thing, but in this case, it totally makes sense because it shows how the power is going to his head. Perhaps the biggest improvement is that there is way more action. Tommy still has his army and even added some old maids to it. <laughs> they look so enthused. Plus towards the end, the movie essentially becomes a combination of Rambo and Trouble Man. He's sniping dudes from the top of billboards, suffocating guys on planes shooting guns through paper bags? What was the point of the bag? All these people can clearly see what you're doing. Then there's my favorite, this beach umbrella stabbing on this confederate flag towel guy. The buildup is comically long. But that's not the best part. Check out the blood. I wonder whose decision it was to animate it. Would it have been cheaper to just use the bright red paint that all these movies usually use? It just seems so out of place. If you felt bored out of your mind while watching Black Caesar, then Hell Up in Harlem is the movie for you. I dare say you can skip Black Caesar, honestly, because the characters who do make a return didn't really have much of an impact in that movie. Hell Up in Harlem is definitely the definitive story of the Godfather of Harlem. <laughs>